Hello, today I have a new video about the thread border router for you. Why a new video? Because the old one is a little bit out of date. There are a few changes in the repository, especially with the NUT6 for translation. And um, since the meta specification 1.0 is also out since I think 22nd of September, um, Mata becoming more and more popular. Uh, it's a protocol for home automation and for this we are needing also a thread border router. So let's first see the topology here from a network, a thread network connected with a, a local area network or with the internet. Normally a border router connects the thread network with another Ethernet network like uh, our local area network. It can also connect to uh, our Wi-Fi uh, network, so uh, VLAN. Um, and uh, normally the thread network using IPv6 addresses and the thread border router can also translate IPv6 address to IPv4 addresses. So there will be a special prefix and um, then you can reach even uh, uh, IPv4 address like in your uh, local area network and even in the internet. We will test this later with the Google DNS. And um, when you're seeing here, you can, in a thread network connected with a border router on our local area network, you can use UDP and TCP uh, on the network layer for communication. And as the application layer, there are protocols like CoAP, MQTT, and now also MATA. Yeah. Um, there are already a few videos out which explain matter a little bit, but we want to have a short look uh, at this protocol at the layers. Matter is here at the application layer. We're seeing here normally uh, um, we having at the downer layer, so matter always working with IPv6. When we're having our thread network, we're having six low pan and uh, on the top UDP and now you can also use uh, TCP. It's also an open thread implemented and in our Ethernet and Wi-Fi we're having anyway TCP and UDP and MATA is here for home automation on the top. So when we seeing like this, let's say uh, we needing high data rates so we can still use our Wi-Fi or Ethernet like for audio and video um, for the home automation and for uh, something like a switch where uh, which is battery powered and has low low data rate we can still use um, thread and it's working all together this is why it's at the moment so popular to implement the thread border router we needing a little bit hardware we needing a raspberry pi this is a version for B plus. It works also with the 3B and 3B plus. We needing um, I using here Nordic USB dongle with the NIF 52840 chip on it. Um, can be also from NASA brand. MDK has also one, but this is really not uh, so expensive. I think ten dollars. The Raspberry Pi uh, doesn't have of course uh, 802.15.4 directly integrated. This is why we needing this dongle uh, to give the support for this for the thread network. Ethernet is already um, in the Raspberry Pi and also Wi-Fi if you want to use Wi-Fi. Then we needing a SD card reader and a SD card. This is a 32 gigabyte SD card for the operation system for the Raspberry Pi. And we needing an developer kit that we're having later a thread device with a command line interface to communicate with the PC in our local area network and also with um, the Google DNS later in the internet. So how we uh, activate the possibilities that the Raspberry Pi can also uh, receive open thread or becoming part of an open thread network for this we needing of course a dongle which we have to plug in but the dongle needs also a special kind of firmware and the structure which we will use is the called so called RCP structure radio coprocessor structure there are actually two structures network coprocessor 
and uh, radio coprocessor structure. A network coprocessor structure there is the most part of open thread already on the dongle, but this is not the common one anymore. Now uh, when we see here, this is a RCP structure, only the open thread MAC layer and the drivers are implemented on the dongle. So this means the upper part is implemented in the Raspberry Pi. I mean the Raspberry Pi is powerful enough and so you can also use a smaller um, USB dangle which doesn't have so much power for example. And what kind of infrastructure we want to implement? Um, we are having here our thread network and uh, with the thread nodes this will be then the developer kit later or border router uh, here is a local area network which has also Wi-Fi, yes, this is why W is here in braces. And I have here my PC connected with the IP address 192.168.1.16. The border router will get the IP address with 18 at the end, so DSL router has the 1. And this is an IPv4 network which has also IPv6 addresses here inside but uh, since the DSL border router can only IPv4 we have to when we want to send something in the internet we have to use IPv4 and here so internet connection you're seeing here Google DNS which we will reach later has the IP address 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8. In the first step we have to install on the Raspberry Pi the operation system. For this going on the website from Raspberry Pi, download the Raspberry Pi imager. I'm using here the version for Windows. Uh, install it on your PC and then you can directly install it on the flash drive. But uh, I prefer normally to download the operation system before. When your internet connection is stable you can make it over the imager directly, but I prefer this way. Going to Raspberry Pi, I don't use 64-bit version, so last time it didn't work. So uh, I recommend the 32-bit version, especially with a 32 gig, um, gigabyte uh, SD card, 32-bit is also enough. And I don't use a graphical user interface, I'm using the light version, uh, save a little bit resources and just download it and then after this starting the imager, the Pi imager and choosing the operation system, uh, go on own images and just choose your downloaded image. After this uh, we have to plug in the uh, not the dongle, the SD card here in the, the flash drive. And uh, then we're choosing the SD card, our 32 gigabyte SD card. Then setting also an SSH password, yes, yeah, so that we can connect through SSH later. When you want to connect a keyboard and uh, monitor to your Raspberry Pi, it's also okay. If not, you have also to find out later the IP addresses. Yeah? Normally you find it when your DSL router having DHCP. You see there's a list which IP address it got. If not, you're using an IP scanner or something like this. Um, yeah, setting a password and store it and then go on write. Yeah? This takes a little bit. When it's finished, uh, then just close everything and uh, take the SD card out. Yeah, and just I have another one here in the Raspberry Pi. Just place it in the, your Raspberry Pi. Connect the power the Raspberry Pi and wait until the Raspberry Pi is booted. 
So now I am connecting to the Raspberry Pi via SSH. I'm using for this putty. Uh, so I have the IP address 18 at the end. So just connect there with the username pi and password which we set before. And the first thing what we are needing is to install git since we uh, need this for downloading the git repository. So in the next step we are cloning the git repository for the NIF, the open thread for the NIF 5028XX um, or different version. You can use uh, also another dongle, but we are using the 840. Yeah, so no, this was not okay. So git clone recursive and then HTTPS github open thread otnf 52 800xx.git When this is done, we go in the directory of our repository, which we just download, and we are calling the bootstrap script um, to download dependencies, especially we are needing the uh, ARM compiler. When this is done, we have to build uh, our firmware calling the build script yeah, for the NIF 52840. Um, since we are use, needing the USB, we have to set a few parameters. Um, if you are needing the developer kit, you have to set your uh, OART or uh, also the bootloader is not USB. But for us, the bootloader is USB and we are using USB trends for, uh, as parameter. Now, after the build is finished, I mean, we're having the build version, the RCP and the NCP version. You can find it in bin, uh, uh, in build bin. And you're seeing here, there are a few different versions. We are needing the um, RCP version, yeah? So, going back and we are have to convert this version into an hex file so that we can transfer it over the bootloader to our dongle. So for this I'm uh, using arm non um, object copy. So the command is here. So I build this when I working here I have now the hex file. And now I have to transfer the hex file, of course, to the dongle. And for this first, I need to transfer it to my computer. Uh, from the Raspberry Pi, I use for this file Zilla. I mean, you can use, of course, whatever is SSH uh, client you want. So connecting here via yeah, SSH, SFTP and uh, going in the directory and download here the otrcp hex file. The easiest way to transfer this firmware now to our dongle is to using NIF Connect SDK, um, uh, NIF Connect for desktop, the one who is using normally is NIF Connect SDK, probably installed it already, so you're going on the website from Nordic Semiconductor, just download it and install it yeah, for your uh, operation system. So I have it already and I have connect for desktop. And there we are needing the programmer. If it's not already installed, click on install and then on open. There we are adding the file which we just download. So 
here I have the OT RCP hex file and um, now we have to plug in our dongle uh, to USB and directly on the side here is a button, you know, here is a reset button. Um, you have to click it, that it's going into the bootloader mode and plug it in and then it's flashing red, this means it's a bootloader mode. And then we can select the device here and directly write the file on our dongle. So when this is finished, our um, dongle is ready. We can plug it into our uh, Raspberry Pi. Be sure that you are not using uh, the USB 3, using USB 2 ports. Plug it in and it's ready. I will also put the RCP hex file uh, in the description for download so you can skip the scap, uh, steps if it's a little bit too complicated because it takes also a little bit longer. Now we have to make uh, from the Raspberry Pi an open thread border router. For this we have to clone another repository. Be sure you are in your home directory again. And then we are cloning the open thread border router repository. So it's GitHub open thread or T bear or bear R. Um, minus POSIX of a border router and just clone it. Um, now, when this is finished and we're having the repository, we have to uh, also install the dependencies. And here coming the first uh, difference between the previous installation. So we have now the choice to uh, choosing the as NAT64. NAT64 is for translating IPv6 address to IPv4 addresses when we want to reach IPv4 addresses. Yeah? And there before it was always used Tiger and now we're um, using here OpenThread. Yeah, you can still install Tiger as NAT64 service then you have to put here in Tiger and it will still install and it will work like before so it will make uh, another interface and uh, install Tiger and you're having your configuration for a file for Tiger. But uh, we want to use the service from open threads this time and um, install it on this way. When this step is done, which takes a little bit, then we can start the setup script. And we have to set here our interface name. So uh, this is normally a, a, a ETH0. You can check this with if config, of course. If you're using um, a Wi Fi, you activate Wi Fi, then of course you have a different name here. But for us, it's now ETH0. Now the border router is finished and we just have to reboot the border router. To check if everything went right after the reboot, we can uh, let us um, show the services, sudo system ctl status, and we needing at least three services from the border router. There is a service, a web service, OTBR web service. Then we having the MDNS service and the OTBR agent service. This should be running at least. And also we can now connect with the web browser to our border router with the IP address. Yeah, be careful what IP address you're having. I'm having here the 18. So you're seeing here a web uh, interface. You can even uh, generate here, form a new network, but I don't use it. I prefer to make it over as a, a terminal window. Now we will uh, start a new thread network. 
um, for this, uh, we're making a new data set. Data uh, set init new. Yeah, we can see here the data set. Uh, data set. Uh, with the parameter here, but I want to change a few parameters. I want to use channel 11. I'm normally using channel 11 um, and setting the network key. To, uh, yeah, well, now network key. This is it. I, it's easier for me for sniffing later when I want to check the network um, traffic. Yeah, you can look again at the data set. Now we're having the network here and the channel uh, set. Uh, after this, we are making this active and starting our thread network. So if config up and thread start. Now we don't have any uh, other thread device in the thread network, but we can still test it. And there are a few things which are different now. Before with Tiger, there was a, a configuration file where you could set the um, uh, prefix for the NUT6 um, translation. Now it's chosen um, from the open thread stack. So we'll be seeing here is this prefix. So we have to use this prefix for the translation. So I copy this prefix for a test. Um, since we can also ping directly. So you see uh, it's not always the same. It's um, choose it by itself. Uh, I have here NASA store sudo ot. Uh, ping. We can already ping through our device uh, Google DNS. It should also go with the Raspberry. And we're seeing that the packet is, packet is received. And we can also ping our PC in the network as uh, long we allow ping there. With my Windows PC, I allow it. So it has the IP address 16. And you're seeing also in my network, ping is working. And we can also see what kind of uh, routes are taken, also prefix in the net data, yeah, net data show. And you're seeing here, this is our mesh net uh, prefix. And here, this is 69. Um, subnet here, we're having our prefix for the uh, IPv6 IP4 translation. Since our thread network can only IPv6 addresses, we have to add something in front. Yeah? And he can directly making out of um, the 8.8.8, yeah, the translation, you will see it here. Um, the full IP address will be uh, then at the end. 808, um, 808. Uh, so here, converted directly, automatic, automatically. Now we will add here our second thread device in the thread network. For this, we are <coughs> using the NIF Connect SDK. Yeah, you know already. I have a lot of other videos where I explain it. We are just using a, a sample. A, application. We are create a new application and there we are choosing the CLI open thread uh, where is it? Uh, maybe open thread and the CLI here. Select it and uh, your new CLI, create application. Make the build configuration from this. Yeah, 
and since the developer kit, yeah, choosing for the developer kits, the uh, configuration file, the build file. And when this is finished, we just flash it on our connected device. Make a recent flash that really everything is empty, that there's no uh, parameter for, for another open thread network is set, yeah, so that it's clean. And when this is finished, we have our th two devices, and I'm starting putty again to connecting to my NIF Connect SDK. Uh, it's not started the network yet here. So uh, to getting the parameter, we're making a commissioning. For this, we're starting first the commissioner at the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, commissioner start, it's done. Then we're adding a device. Commissioner joiner add, and then I'm using the asterisk, so I don't limit it to a device. I'm setting the passphrase to 13456. I'm setting a quite long time, so this is in uh, seconds, so it's 10 minutes. So so why it's not working? So no. Okay, set State active, so try it again. Commissioner joiner add. Well, it, now it's working. Uh, let's take a look at the table. We're seeing here the commissioner table, so we have a quite long time for our other device to commission there. And this we are doing now. We have to be sure that the thread network is not started, so um, I stop it first for safety. Uh, so, and then I'm starting the join process. Um, yeah, first I have to check, of course, the uh, PAN ID. Uh, yeah, this is set to a FF. FF, this is quite good. This means the commission is, is working when you're having parameters set before and there's another PAN ID yeah, um, which doesn't fit to the PAN ID from the network. Um, we think here the PAN ID from our network here is 788D. Yeah, then the commissioning doesn't work. When you set it to FFFF, then it's working. So. Just set the PAN ID before for safety to FFFF. So, like this. I mean, here it's already done, and then you can start the joining process. Yeah. So, okay, joiner start. Okay, state. Oops. This. Okay, config up. I think I have to be sure that the if config is up. If not, it's also not working. So now you're seeing, yeah, you have to be out of the network, but the interface has to be up. Yeah, and you're seeing here that I'm getting the joining, and we're having here now the data set. Uh, um, yeah, we got the data set, the active one, set active, and we're seeing here the network here and the PAN ID. And when I now start this network thread, 
start. Yeah, I will get also the other parameters. Yeah, we're seeing here all the parameters. And when I make the uh, not 64 prefix, I think this doesn't work. Not 64 prefix, but net data show does work. I think this works only at the border router when the parameter for the border router are set. So, um, OT net data show, and we're seeing here also that the uh, address, the prefix is here. And now we can also send a ping to the Google server, for example, for the DNS from this device. Okay, it's not OT ZL. So, uh, also no sudo, <laughs> you know, on the Raspberry Pi. And we're seeing that we're getting an answer from the Google DNS. And also from my PC, you can get an answer. Point 0.1, point 0.16. Yeah, and the network is working. So it's nice that we reach from our <coughs> thread device here, our PC and also the Google DNS. The question is now, of course, do I also reach from my PC as a thread device? So how can I communicate in the other direction? And um, when we are looking there, um, here we seeing the IP addresses. There are different IP addresses. There are on mesh IP addresses um, from our uh, um, mesh network. And there is here also a special IP address, which the uh, border router generate or give to the devices, uh, at least the prefix. When we're looking at <coughs> as the net data show, we seeing here different kind of prefixes. We saw in the one which is for um, the uh, net uh, NAT64 translation, this prefix, and also we're seeing here a um, prefix uh, which is used for the IP address which is generated here. This is for the device that in the local area network can reach our devices through this IP address. Yeah, we get this um, also through the command OMRR prefix. <coughs> And then when we're looking at our um, Windows PC and we are looking at print uh, route print, then we're seeing here also this address here, so routing table. So uh, the prefix which we're having here is routed to uh, um, the device with this local link address and this, when we're checking here, the IP addresses is our no, our border router. Yeah, so this is here the IP address. Um, no, not from this, we have to use if config. Is of course the IP addresses from our ETH0. You're seeing the FE at the MD54C. Uh, where we have our Windows in D45C. <coughs> so this means all IP addresses from SysNets are routed to our border router. And when I now ping here this address, this is from our device here, yeah, from this device. I check it here. Uh, let's see it. It's difficult to bring it up. You see here ping F29F, F29F, and then I'm making a ping there, and uh, we see I'm getting an answer from this IP address. So we can communicate in both direction. Uh, of course, we cannot ping an IP v4 address because thread doesn't understand IP v4. Only the border router can translate it. I hope it was understandable how the thread border router works, how he can connect to uh, networks and how the routing and so on function. 
Um, I mean, this is one of the biggest advantages from a thread comparable to a Zigbee or Z-Wave. We don't need any gateway. We can directly integrate our home network or even the internet and so communicate. And this will make it possible, like for the new network protocol, uh, MATA, which is for home automation to combine Ethernet, Wi-Fi and thread. Um, and that we can have different devices, like for high data rate, we having some their Wi-Fi and Ethernet, uh, for example, we can have CCTV or video and audio streaming on this. And um, for lower data rate, like for a switch or a thermostat or something like this, um, there we having some thread, and they can be powered with batteries and so on. So they is all integrated. Um, yeah, and this is really nice and beautiful. So if you like the video and it was understandable, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and uh, see you in the next video.